Are you doing this one thing that's absolutely killing your discus? There's four things to look for to see if you're doing this one thing. And we're gonna talk about it in this video, so check it out. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Eric Day Throws Nation. In today's video, we are gonna talk about a thing that kills your distance, kills your power in the discus, and that is the back end. Are you aware of this and are you doing this? Now, one of the things, if you've combed YouTube or you've watched videos, you're gonna hear coaches talk about where the, the right foot lands, and I've done it in created videos too. The foot is supposed to land basically anywhere from one to 11. That would be the best throwers in the world are kind of in that range. On occasion, there are some videos videos that teach you to land at three o'clock. There are throwers that land at three, but that's not what you want to be doing. Now, the thing that you really don't want to be doing is you don't want the back end where you turn the foot and you see this. Now, what that looks like oftentimes is you see a thrower and you kind of see this and they kind of get this crank and you see it's really like the foot cranking into the throw versus seeing the nice wide sweep leg. And this is a big problem because when that happens, you see your athletes, their throwers are going to be shifting instead of rotating and the upper body has an opportunity to catch up to the lower body. You're going to feel a lack of power. This is going to result in a whole bunch of terrible things at your finish. But you want to understand how to see this, and if you're doing it, it's got to be fixed or is it going to create a big limitation. The longer you do it, the worse the pattern gets, the more ingrained it gets, and it becomes harder and harder to fix it and do it correctly. One of the first things that we want to be doing is we want to understand the, app, the sweep leg path itself. The sweep leg path itself is wide. We've talked about this, and it has to come here. You'll notice when I bring that sweep out, it's coming around. You're seeing it kind of move here. Here, and everything's easy and just rotates. The first thing is to get that right. So if your thought process is sometimes people are taught to go with the inside of the thigh, they're getting kind of this pendulum effect and that kind of leads to this kind of turnover and crank. Now there are people who have done that thrown well, but I would argue that those are very highly talented athletes and that is not what you're seeing the best throwers in the world do consistently, right? It's a long, wide rotational path. So if you looked at multiple throwers and you kind of see, you would see that sweep leg path. You don't see very many throwers leading like this. So you have two types of pendulums. This is your first common mistake. If you're coming around your throw, Row, thinking low, wide, and come across your body, which a lot of people will teach, that's going to be a tendency to lead you into that crank and that leads into that back end. There's the kind of coming across the ring this way and then there's coming across the ring this way. So there's two types of pendulums, both are wrong. Some people kind of come up and see the swing this way and some people kind of go out in, in pendulum this way. Both are creating these hard angles and that is gonna lead to that back end. The second thing that you're gonna look at that's gonna cause this back end is coming in and getting this inverted orbit. So you come around and the athlete kind of intuitively cranks the discus is down here and then they wind up setting this down and they shift into the throw. This is gonna kill the block. It's usually cause shift and it's gonna cause foul problems. So that's another thing that you wanna check. It's see if you're doing, if your orbit's inverted, it's gonna be really difficult to come around. You wanna avoid that because if you're coming through and you see the athlete coming around and they're kind of reaching up, they come out out of the sweep and they come up and they do this type of thing, they crank around, that's that orbit is screwing up and you'll see people doing that. Now, another common mistake is an early rewrap. So now you've got maybe a combination of the first few and they're holding too long and then they kind of shut themselves off. So they inhibit rotation because sometimes you're told that you want to be keeping your chest squared up to the throw, which I would agree with 100%, but sometimes that gets interpreted incorrectly and people hold the arm and they start rewrapping closer to like what you would see in the rotational shot, that becomes a problem. So now you're gonna restrict rotation and so what happens when you get stuck, you crank and you get the back in. The fourth thing, now remember there's a whole lot more than these four, but we're just gonna cover four today. The fourth thing that you can do is no rewrap. So now you're coming around and you see this and that's one of the things that can lead to that low orbit. And so when they come around and they get too rotational, they get too rotational 
and then they kind of do this thing at the end and you're going to see a lot of throwers where you see as i said they can come out of the ring and you actually see this if you look at their film they're like stretched across the ring and they look like this and what they should be looking like right is where you're seeing everything here so everything rotates so those are four common things and if you're doing any of those you got to get that addressed. Now, this is what we talk about inside with our members, inside the throwing chain reaction system. We go through this and we try to explain how do you identify these things, but what's most important for you, these are just four things. There's multiple things that can lead to this back end. And you may not be doing this, but you may be doing some of these. And if you are, it's costing you distance. It's costing you a more efficient, more faster, powerful finish. And that's what you want to be able to do. So what do you got to do? What we do with our program, again, we're trying to teach you how to identify it and understand that when you set up the throw right, you're going to understand to look for what's wrong. But more importantly, if you're doing this or any combination of these things, you have to understand what's going on in the chain reaction, why this is occurring, because it could be these four things or it could be four other things, or it could be a combination of a number of things. So how do you find four, five, 10, 15 things? You have to understand how the throw works. And that's what we're talking about here today. This is what we refer to as pillar three, four. And we have a bunch of different things that teach you exactly how this works. If you'd like to know more about how that works, be sure to click the link below. So hopefully you found today's video helpful. If you have any questions, be sure to throw them in the comments below. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to check out Throwing Chain Reaction System. All right, guys, thanks so much. We'll see you on the next video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. As you can see, there's a lot that goes into what we do with the Throwing Chain Reaction System. If you would like to learn more about how to structure your practices and find the things that help unlock your potential, click the link below and we will see you on the next video.